Okay, good evening, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started on today's episode of Inspire Me Wednesdays. We have someone who I'm pretty sure all of you already know, and she has a great, great success story to share with us because it hasn't been linear all the way, and she has came out winning on top. Okay, she is currently a market mentor with Monet, and I'm sure you all know her as the hair care queen, the VIP queen, Miss Abby Tamaran. Let me go ahead and un. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, is it loud? No, you're perfect. Okay, good, good. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're so excited to hear from you. I'm so excited that you asked me to, you know, talk. I know. I was like, who can I do, Abby? Um, so we're going to start with, tell us a little bit about your story. We have a lot of new girls here. Um, taking us back to, you know, how and when you started your journey a little bit, where you are now, and then we'll hit you with some great questions we have planned for you. Wait one second. Wait, you're muted. Am okay. I unmuted now? Yeah, go. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So I actually, okay, so I want everybody to take this into account to always follow up with your potential because my mentor, Brittany Nierman, um, she followed up with me a dozen amount of times. Nicole Vitulli is our upline, our director upline. And she was saying, <laughs> she was like, give up on this girl. This girl obviously doesn't want to start because I kept giving all the excuses. I had the time excuse. I had the money excuse. I had you know, I was working 100 hours a week. I was a full-time bartender, full-time intern, dog mom, all the things. I was moving across country and graduating, all literally all of the things. And I kept giving her excuses. Or I kept telling her, I'll sign up next week. I'll sign up the week after. And things just kept happening over and over and over again, which is life. Because if nothing changes, nothing changes, right? So finally, I saw her talking on her story. This was not from a follow-up. She was just talking on her story and she was just genuinely so excited. And I was like, I need some of that energy. I need something different. So this also goes to show you never know who's watching, even though you've asked people hundreds of different times, you never know who's watching. Right? So I messaged her. I ended up moving across country. <laughs> I started the business, moved across country for a job. I graduated, moved across country and the job ended up falling through. So I had this, I went back to bartending and then I started, you know, getting this really, I, I really only wanted to do this for an extra $500 a month. And that's usually how a lot of people start. They want to do this part time. So this is not something, you know, a lot of people come into wanting to do this full time. So I started doing this part time and I started realizing how much money could be made within this. So 2020 happened and we all know what happens in 2020. I was bartending and the world shut down. We can't bartend in the middle of a pandemic. So I had to make this work. And ever since then, I've been doing this full time. Um, and my back was against the wall. So I did everything I could. I was only MMV at the time. I mean, only I was MMV at the time. And I got to MM within less than a year from that, from that date. So I was MM before my two year mark. I had earned my Cadillac, maintained MM for quite a while. And then my two MMV lines that I was relying on so much. I wasn't building other leaders. I wasn't, you know, I was just honestly just sitting there. And both of those MMB lines ended up quitting. So I lost those two legs and then I lost MM. And there went my money. There went my income. So I had to make something work. And I remember actually talking to Stuart. If you don't know who Stuart is, he used to be the president. I miss him so much. He was so amazing. But I was actually talking to him in DR and he was saying... I was telling him everything and he's like, you need to focus on blocks. And I know it sounds so dumb and simple, but I think a lot of us forget even out of smart start to focus on blocks. So I started focusing on blocks. I started, you know, really just making sure I was building a block, even though I didn't get a, a block bonus, you know? So I, uh, you know, the first 
I kept telling myself I sucked at getting VIPs all the time. I kept, like, I literally told myself that. And guess what? I sucked at getting VIPs. So what you tell yourself does matter. If you keep saying like, oh, I'm not going to maintain MMP or I'm not going to maintain MMB or I'm not going to hit this. I'm not going to hit that. Then you're not. You're right. But if you say you are going to hit it, you're also right. Right. So I, you know, <laughs> I was like, all right, I need to change my language. I need to change the way I talk too. So I just started posting VIP content. I stopped posting sale, 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 sale. Buy a hot tool for free. Like nobody cares if the hot tools for free. People want to know what the product is going to do for them. They don't care if a hot tool is free. <laughs> they really want to know what is it going to do for me, right? So I started posting more transformational content. I didn't even use my before and afters to begin with. I didn't think my before and afters were that great. Um, I was using other people's before and afters and I was getting a decent amount of clients. I started getting... You know, I went from enrolling one VIP maybe a month to five and then six. That was really good. Like that, I was, I was like, yeah, I'm killing it. And <laughs> then I got this idea because my best friend, she paints hats and she was painting hats on TikTok and she went viral and she started selling out on hats. I'm like, okay, if she can, if this girl can do it with hats, I can do it with hair care, right? Not everybody wants a painted hat, but everybody needs shampoo. So I started, I posted not even a before and after. I posted a tutorial on how to do my curls and it went viral. And I got like 20 hair quizzes, which was big for me because no one had really filled out my hair consult before then by themselves. So I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to do with myself. I didn't know how to handle myself. I didn't know how to act. So I started just enrolling VIPs. I enrolled 14 in one month and Nicole and Brittany both messaged me. They're like, what are you doing? And I told them I was posting on TikTok. They're like, Abby, TikTok. I'm like, yeah, TikTok. And so Brittany even said this to me. She's like, I honestly thought you just got lucky with one video because it kept happening again and again and again. I kept doing it. Even if I didn't get the views, even if I didn't get hair consults, I was like, it worked once. It worked for one person. It can work again. So I kept posting. I kept doing before and afters. I kept just literally throwing things at the wall until it stuck. And soon enough, I started enrolling 50 to 80 VIPs a month, 100, 200 VIPs a month. Like my average now is 150 new VIPs a month. Um, I was making more money at MMB than I was at MM to begin with. And for 36 months, wait, not 36. 12, 12, 30 months. So two and a half years for two and a half years. I was trying to rehit MM for two and a half years. I actually considered on quitting when I lost MM. I literally was on the phone with Brittany crying. I was like, I, I, I don't know if this is for me. And she's like, are you kidding? She's like, Abby. And she reminded me like, there is always going to be ups and downs in this business. Do not quit on a bad day or a bad month. So I was like, all right. So I stuck in there <laughs> and I started making a lot more money at MMB than I did at MM, then I hit AMM, then I hit MM last month again. And I was just, I like have learned so many lessons and I've learned that you cannot blame anybody for your business you have to take accountability for it. So you can't sit here and be like, nobody's signing up as a VIP or a market partner. Okay, why? Are you doing your reach outs? Are you posting? It's all on you. Because it doesn't matter if you have a hair transformation or if you don't. There's thousands of other hair transformations that you can show. Are you excited? Are you genuinely showing before and afters? Are you trying to do transformation? Like showing transformations rather than a sale, 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 sale. Guys, I'm going to be honest. I do not post every sale. That's not my job. Monique does that because it's Monique's sale. But I'm not Monique. I'm Abby. Joe's Joe. If you want to do skincare, do not post about a hair care sale. If you want to do hair care, don't post about a skincare sale. If you are skincare sale, if you want to do both, go ahead and do both. Be beauty. But you don't have to post every single sale because people have a natural sale. So until they know that you genuinely care 
that you are trying to help, they're not going to respond to you. But that's my story. Oh my God, Abby, I'm like typing things as I go. And this is your call and it's about you, but I just want to add because these things need to be emphasized, okay? Yeah. You went from getting one VIP to three VIPs to five VIPs. That's some of us right now to getting 200 VIPs a month. And Abby's great, but Abby is no different than us. Like this is, no. a, every time I hear you talk, it's a slap in the face for me because I'm like, if Abby's doing it, why am I not getting 200 VIPs, right? So it's a wake up call for every single one of you. She was regular as Abby in the business, five VIPs a month, woke up one day, decided to make a change and her life and her business have transformed. And something else I want you guys to pay attention to, the income side of it, the money side of it. This girl makes so much more money than a lot of, probably even some MMMs that aren't really working their personal business. She said, I'm going to make these paychecks my you know what. And she has been with her clients. She, she I don't know, more than some directors, honestly. She, she said in a call the other day, like, how much she's been able to make. And I'm just like, off of uh, being an MMB rank. So that goes to show us we control our paychecks. Okay. It's not like, oh my God, I'm not director. I can't make money. No, yes, you can. So let's let's go on to the questions because I'm sure a lot of this will be um answered in, you know, in the questions we ask. I'm actually gonna pass it over to Mariana because she has uh, the first one for you. Mari, I think there you go. Hello, I might actually be at a place that is loud and obviously the, the loudness. And I just wanted to say that when you're committed to your business, you can literally find a corner anywhere if you bring your tripod and your light and you can work. So also like balancing that is huge and it's, we can do that here. And that's a huge opportunity that we have. Abby, I have a question that I've actually been curious about for a long time. What goes on behind the scenes? Because we see we see Instagram, we see TikToks, we see we see what you're putting out. But to have that kind of volume, it requires a lot of your commitment and a lot of your work. So what what goes on behind the scenes? I love this question. Um, this is this is so amazing. This is such a great question because ninety five percent of the time I am in sweats and a sweatshirt working. You see Abby like dressed up like guys, the only reason why I have makeup on right now and my hair is semi done. My hair is actually kind of straight because I did a video earlier, but because I'm at the casino with my family, that's literally it. <laughs> that's it. I am most of the time in sweats working now. So when my business really took off, my fiance had actually gotten deployed. And I think a lot of people forget that other people have a whole other life. They have other stuff going on. They have their own personal traumas, all this stuff, right? So um, I kind of threw myself into work. I was at, I actually did not have a tripod. I did not have a ring light. My phone was up, propped on my computer with my pop socket. And I was literally Googling hair stuff and repeating it. And I had built my business in a 12 by 15 bedroom at my dad's house. I moved back in with my dad because our, long story short, our house was like the lease was almost up. Hunter was only supposed to be gone for two months. He ended up being gone for six months. And it was just a lot. I had two big dogs living in that room with me because my dogs did not get along with my dad's dog. And I worked hours, hours. Like I would sit there and do hair consults and it took me a minute to get like people ask me, they're like, I'm so overwhelmed with these 30 consults. I'm like, you have to actually sit down and do them because the systems I have took me a minute to actually sit down and get them done. Now I have a lot more time freedom because I actually know my, I can do this stuff while I'm walking, while I'm at the, like, I don't spend nearly as much time as doing these as I used to, but that's because I put the time in where a lot of people wouldn't like I'm saying sitting on my computer for hours, answering hair consults, sitting down, focusing. And it took a lot of focus work, no Netflix, no nothing, just focus. And that's how I started pulling in volume. And then people started reordering, you know, my volume's at 50,000 and it's the 20th. 
right? So it's like my PV. That's my PV. And so that's a lot of people reordering. And honestly, I have not worked as like a ton because I have a sustainable business now. But I think a lot of people forget that you have to work like a lot of people won't to live a life a lot of people don't. Because I'm excited to go back to work. I'm excited to go back home and just do some hair consults and just sit down. But like something that used to take me six hours to do now takes me one because I have it down and it does take practice, right? And people are like, oh, can I, can I see your systems? Can I see this? Can I see that? I'm like, my systems are literally what I say. You go to Google Forms, you reach out to people and you wait for them to respond. And if they don't respond, you keep moving on, you keep making content, you keep doing the things. And people are like, it's still taking me a long time. And it's like, okay, so the best example is everybody knows basketball. You know how people can shoot a basket. That doesn't necessarily mean you can shoot a basket too. You have to practice. And people forget that you have to keep practicing. It's not a natural skill most of the time. Does that make sense? I love that. That's a great analogy. <laughs> Yeah, there she tied it into a story. Now we're gonna remember the basketball story. Um, okay. The next question, um, I have it here written down. Okay, how do you manage your leads that don't sign up so that you can follow up with them? What is your system for someone that fills out a quiz? So basically, I guess you or you answered that, but yeah, like what do you do with people that don't don't sign up? How do you keep track? Do you follow up? Do you not? Do they come back to you? So I, I now send an email, like a email saying, Hey, I've reached out to you. If you don't reach out to me in 30 days, your hair consult is going to be archived. Um, but that's it. That's it. Uh, I, the goal is to not be so, if you're so focused on who's not responding, you're never going to get new leads. So I like put people through the funnel real fast. I'm like, you know what? Like, I don't have time to follow up with these people. So I forget who doesn't even respond to me. Okay, so that right now, because you have such volume, were you like that when you were starting out, when you were getting three VAPs a month, five? Like, if they didn't respond, you kind of just let them be, or were you more into the follow-up? I did about three follow-ups. So I did, you know, hey, I just wanted to check in, help you, um, see, like, where your head was at. I never texted them about a sale. That's one thing I think a lot of people will do. They'll be like, hey, like, we have this amazing sale where you can get this, like you can get $60 off and it's not even addressed to their hair needs, right? If there is a sale that we're there where I recommend them a free hair, like a, a hair serum, and all of a sudden it's free with the sale, I'll text them being like, hey, I don't know if money was an issue, but right now we are having a sale where your hair serum is free. You can't text every single person that though, because it doesn't relate to them. They just feel like you're trying to make a sale. So you have to take care of what people are actually like looking for and you have to relate the sale back to them or just follow up with them genuinely. Be like, hey, like I was just looking at my hair transformation and or like some other girl's transformation and it just reminded me to message you. I would love to help you with your hair. That's it. Perfect. Straight, simple to the point. You girls are starting to see in all the calls we do, it's like the simple answers that we keep giving you. It's for a reason. I'm glad I'm hearing it from someone else. Okay, Maddie, I'm going to mute you. There you go. I love it. I love everything you said. My question is, what did you do in your season of darkness? Like before your friend went viral on TikTok and you were like, oh my God, what am I going to do with my business? What were you focusing on during that season where you weren't getting the results, you didn't have the the MMB and you weren't re-ranking MM? What was your focus then? Yeah, so with the season of darkness, I actually have had them multiple times since even going viral. I actually had a really bad one last December, but it, it didn't seem like it because I was still showing up. I was still doing the do. Um... I think like something that I I start, I was reading a lot of doing a lot of personal development because usually when you are in a season like that, that's where you need personal development the most. Um, And I'm actually really glad that I went to Mon Nations that year because Mel Robbins actually spoke. And that's when she said, when you are in a season of darkness, you need to do personal development. So I was actually just practicing personal development. And honestly, I was just, pouring in I was just like I was researching I was like how can I 
I was like brain dumping, putting a bunch of ideas, but I never, I guess like it's hard for me to answer this question because a lot of people unfortunately treat this business like a hobby. And what a hobby is, is you show up when you feel like it. You want to do something because you feel like it. That's the definition of a hobby. A business, you have to show up come hell or high water. And that's just how I operate. Even like when I was, when I was in high school, I, I was sick all the time, but I still did my assignments. I still got straight A's. I literally missed 40 days of school my senior year and I still graduated with a 4.5 GPA, you know, because I show up even when it's difficult and that's what separates entrepreneurs from entrepreneurs. Um, but my biggest season of darkness was being consistent and doing personal development because I see all the time people are like, they shut down completely. They stop posting, they stop doing their stuff. They stop doing personal development. And then it starts becoming this habit. Like they develop this habit of just downward spiral because they don't realize that life's just going to keep happening no matter what. And so during a season of darkness that I'm going to argue that's the biggest time to be consistent and do your personal development. I love that. Okay. Two more and we're, we're done. Um, so when it comes to sales, sorry, I'm reading from the phone. When, when it comes to sales, do you ever inform them or you just let them see your content? Like, do you do a flow desk or a project broadcast or like those mass texts to your client or you just trust that they see your content? Um, I have a VIP lounge that I post in for my clients and I also do a project broadcast text for them um, saying like, hey, like we have this sale, but I don't do every sale. I will do the sales that I, because <laughs> to be honest, some of the sales, I'm just like, I don't, I don't know if they'll like this, you know, like even there's some sales where I'm like, that's great that we have sales, but even, you know, if you have to discount your products to get people to buy, they're not going to buy regularly. So I don't always like just post a sale all the time. Um, but I will like, if it's like a really good sale, like a buy one, get one free oil, you know, I'm already texting all my VIPs doing project broadcasts, doing campaign messages, um, flow desks, I don't usually use unless it's like for my directions for my clients, like instructions on how to use the products. Love that. Okay. And last question. If I was like your new market partner, think like we all just joined you today. What, what do you tell us? What, what is your first assignment for your new girls to do? My first assignment. So I actually have a flow desk, like an onboarding system. Um, and I have them go step by step through that because the videos are short, sweet to the point. And if, they do not complete that. I know where they stand within the business, you know? Um, so I just send them that and they have boards. They have access to a bunch of different things. And that's their first assignment to do that. And then schedule a call. And on this call, we talk about, if you guys um, haven't been on Julie Stevens call, you talk about your why. You talk about how much money you want to make, how much time you have to commit, what their goal is. Um, one thing that scares them about this business, so we get limiting beliefs out of the way. And then I also have a crucial conversation with them where I tell them, I'm like, you are going to have ups and downs. That is entrepreneurship. You have to pay your dues in order to get money because in, I think a big, like I set expectations for them a lot because Eric Warfey even said it the best. And this is so true. Okay. It's, uh. I call it the one, two, four, six method. He calls it the one, three, five, seven method. But essentially for a year, you're going to be paying your dues. You're going to be underpaid for a, like, it's going to seem like a long period of time. Then you're going to be fairly paid for a short period of time. And then you're going to be overpaid for a long period of time or your lifetime. And that's literally what I've experienced. I pulled all of my revenue from my last four years of this business. And then my revenue from just this year, and I've made more, I've doubled what I made within three years and one year. And that's insane. But that's also because of work and you have to pay your dues in order to succeed. Because success is not easy. 
It takes work. It takes consistency. And as a society, we're so used to here's five hours of my time. I'll take $20 versus I will give you 10 hours of my time. I might not get paid however much, but if I keep doing that for six months, I'll get paid more than my manager, my supervisor, my CEO. Like it's, it all compounds versus just getting instant gratification, if that makes sense. That makes so much sense. And I feel like a lot, a lot of people need to hear that, especially our, our new girls, you know, starting off or the ones that have kind of been stagnant for a little bit. It yeah. will all pay off. And for some of us, the financial aspect of it comes faster. And that just means that there's more personal development that development that you need to do, or there's more yeah. lessons that you need to learn. It does not mean that it's not going to happen for you. It's not a matter of if it ha happens, it's a matter of when it happens, you're going to be fully prepared to welcome it. And I mean, look at Abby. She did all that work. She was training because the universe, God knew she was about to be getting 200 VIPs a month. I bet you 99% of us, if we get thrown with 200 VIPs a month, we would not know how to handle them, right? Yeah. So it's all about preparing for when that moment hits for you, whatever that moment is. Um, but Abby, that is what we have for you. Thank you so much for getting on, for sharing, for being such an inspiration for all of us and for showing us what's possible, literally how you've transformed your business just because you decided to like commit and apply. So we love you. Thank you so much. Enjoy your family time. Bye, guys. Bye. Have a good night.